you know, there is something about getting equipment out of a little black case in the back of a car that seems very ghost dog. Hi, and welcome to a Draft House Diary for Wednesday, February 21st, 2024, when I came out here to the Aspen Grove Alamo Draft House to see Jim Jarmusch's movie Ghost Dog, The Way of the Samurai. I got to see this thanks to the Alamo's 1999 time capsule. They're doing time capsule screenings throughout the year of 2024. The first one is 1999, then they're gonna to move to a wave of 1994 movies and work their way back for a few decades. I'm looking forward to a number of movies in this, but I was specifically looking forward to seeing Ghost Dog. I love this movie. I've seen it many times before, but I've never seen it on a big screen. I, and I wanted that opportunity. I wanted to see it again with Ian, and uh, we had a great time. There is so much to this movie, and there's, this is such a great example of a Jim Jarmusch movie in that Jarmusch is somebody who never makes the same movie twice. Yeah, he has certain stylistic characteristics, but once he's made a movie, it's as if he thinks, okay, I've made that movie. I don't want to go back there. I want to make something new. And there is a lot of innovative work in Ghost Dog from 1999. It's, it's perfectly suited for its time, and it incorporates a lot of what was going on culturally. The whole story is about Forrest Whitaker's character, Ghost Dog, who is, well, he's an assassin for the mob, but specifically, he is devoted to one particular medium to low level mobster who did something for him in the past. And now, Ghost Dog sees himself as Louis' retainer someone who is devoted to him in the exact same way that a samurai in samurai era Japan would have been devoted to his master. And this ties into the fact that Ghost Dog follows the wisdom of Hagakure, the book of the samurai. Now, there's a lot to be said about Hagakure and to what extent it really does represent a samurai era code, but the important thing is this is a code for Ghost Dog and he follows it absolutely because he, he sees the wisdom in it, he also sees the wisdom of having a code. It's a wonderfully, wonderfully understated performance by Forrest Whitaker in this role. A person of very few words, a person of very decisive action, and yet someone who, they make a point of how easy it is to overlook him, how people just look past him. He is a ghost in that regard. And the whole thing, like a lot of the movies I like, the structure and the context is very fable-like. They never tell you the city in which this takes place, although it was shot mostly in Jersey City. They never even tell you the state. We see license plates that say the industrial state and the highway state. Very, very generic. And that gives you this blank slate in which to paint the picture you need with Ghost Dog, with the mobsters, with Ghost Dog's friends, the people he interacts with. And it is all supported by an amazing, amazing score. Uh, all the original music was written by Riza from Wu-Tang, and I believe that he coordinated the rest of the movie in, uh, in working with uh, Jarmusch on this. The music is such an integral part of this movie and makes it so much stronger. So I was delighted to see this on a big screen. I will say that seeing it here at the Alamo, the image did not seem as bright as I am accustomed to. In the past, I've seen this on VHS, I've seen this on DVD, and maybe it's just the settings of the televisions I've used, but it always seemed, certain scenes in particular, when there's a lot of blue sky, for example, it always seemed brighter to me, and it was more subdued here in a theater, which surprised me. But nevertheless, beautifully shot, beautiful imagery, uh, a movie I highly recommend. Other parts of this trip to the Alamo, the pre-show, was not a pre-show that was designed specifically for Ghost Dog. Instead, it was their 1999 time capsule pre-show. I imagine they're showing this with all of their 99 time capsule movies. So this had trailers from 1999 movies, commercials from 1999. It had this long, incredibly long industry reel or, or film of some kind featuring dancing babies and the Toyota, I think it was the Toyota Cami kind of a weird little sport utility thing they made back in the late 90s. It was a great idea to use this kind of pre-show to get you into the context of these 1999 movies, which they, they specifically selected based upon their, their time context. I look forward to seeing what they do for 1994 
when they uh, work on those movies. I did get some food, nothing special. I got the pepperoni pizza. That's always good. It wasn't as crisp as it sometimes is, but it was still delicious. I also tried the the Yeti Imperial Stout, which I don't think I've tried before. And that was very good, very hoppy, very bitter, more so than their Nitro Milk Stout from Left Hand Brewery. But it was an interesting change, so I liked that. And the staff, as usual, very efficient, very friendly. Uh, I've got to say, things have gotten better here at uh, the Littleton Alamo in terms of service, in terms of efficiency. So kudos to the way this theater is being run. Well, thank you very much for joining me for this Draft House Diary. If you enjoyed this, please click that like button down below. If you want to see more of these, click subscribe. But most important, I just appreciate you being here. I'll be back soon with more. And in the meantime, enjoy your movies. And when you do, stay till the end of the credits.